Just because I agree with her on this one doesn't mean I'll automatically trust her from now on. Greetings, and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Don't forget, I'm going to be going live soon, so make sure you share this and share the news with everyone. I'll give you a date in another day or two or by my next video. It is going to be on a Thursday night at 7 p.m. Hopefully I won't be overshadowing or uh, competing against any of our favorites. Perhaps maybe we can even combine and collab. Uh, but yes, I'm going to be going live soon in about two months, so stay tuned for that. I'm sure by the time that you see this video that you will already have been privy to the soap opera reality TV event that essentially put Nicki Minaj and Joy race baiting Reed back on the high rate, high, high clickbait rate trail again. <laughs> Try saying that 10 times fast. The tweet tweet here and a live feed there and here a quip, there an insult and everyone is watching with bated breath like it's some kind of murder mystery. I mean, okay, my initial reaction is the same it always is with these celebrities and talking heads. Remembering that one rule of show business can actually help you keep things in perspective and not take everything these folks say as the gospel truth. I mean, think about it though. MSDNC's ratings are in the toilet, and with as volatile as Joy Reid is, especially when it comes to race, I sure wish she would stop trying to speak for or speak to white people so much. Oh wait, aren't her bosses and producers white? Hmm. And who's heard from Nicki Minaj lately? I didn't even know she had a baby. So what does the establishment industry do? All of a sudden, Nicki starts to do the very thing that none of the politicians or the establishment media outlets have tolerated since Trump has been kicked off of Twitter. Question, Question the science. science. Then take notice of how fake her colleagues and media really are and then call them out. Questioning the propagandists is a no-no. I mean, at this point, what could be more controversial than questioning authority? As of the recording of this video, this particular event has gotten the attention of many media outlets around the world. In some circles, it's still being discussed two weeks later. First of all, it makes you wonder what it is that they're trying to divert your attention away from. Secondly, it makes you wonder just how far they're going to go to get your attention. Joy race baiting Reed attacked her first, which Nikki slapped back at. And people like Nikki Minaj, I have to say this. You have a platform, sister, that is 22 million followers. Okay, I have 2 million followers. You have 22 million followers on Twitter. For you to use your platform to encourage our community to not protect themselves and save their lives, my God, sister, you could do better than that. You got that platform, it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing that you got that, that people listen to you, and they listen to you more than they listen to me. For you to use your platform to put people in the position of dying from a disease they don't have to die from, oh my God, as a fan, as a hip hop fan, as somebody who is your fan, I'm so sad that you did that. So sad that you did that, sister, oh my God. So now we have to uh, attack her personally. I want you guys to see what is happening. And they, and they had to make sure it came from a black person first, because if it came from a white person, the black people would be like, oh, you're racist in this. So let's peep this. The first attack was from a black woman. 
Now, this thing to assassinate my character is from a Uncle Tamiana. But most of the establishment talking heads around the world were all scolding her for questioning the powers that be about this to all of her millions of followers. When thinking about it for a minute, comparatively with followers and such, one might guess that most of the folks that were scolding her may be jealous because she does have so many more followers than most of these propagandists that were scolding her. You have a platform, sister, that is 22 million followers. Okay, I have 2 million followers. It's actually harder for them to do their jobs if they have someone more popular questioning even the slightest bit of propaganda that doesn't make sense to anyone. But of course, again, my opinion is that all this whole machination was done for nothing but publicity and clicks, and boy, did it work. I mean, here I am even talking about it, and I'm a famous nobody. Now again, you all know what my opinion is about celebrities and publicity, and the first thing that comes to my mind whenever something this inconsequential blows up. But when I watched one of my newest favorite commentators, I realized they could actually be using the publicity from these clickbait events to totally manipulate the public to following the, the science. science. Even if the celebrity of choice for this job disagrees, they eventually either become a martyr or a rehabilitated hero thus enticing her millions of followers in question to follow the science. Allow me to introduce you to New York Nadia. She is a first generation Cuban immigrant, an actress and an author, I do believe, and she has some extremely poignant discussions as well as being one hell of a patriot. So Nicki Minaj has been getting a lot of media attention for speaking out against cancel culture after Twitter put her on hold for questioning the vaccine. Many conservatives now consider her a champion for their cause, but not so fast. Controlled opposition is a common tactic used to quell public dissent. It's when you destroy your enemy by making them your friend. Allow me to explain. Because of the Tuskegee syphilis study conducted from 1932 to 1972 on black American males, the American urban community does not trust medical experiments conducted by the government, and rightfully so. However, due to circumstances which I'll cover in another video, this vaccine experiment has a very narrow window of profitable gains that the pharma companies are depending on. So they need as many Americans as possible to get on board. But how can they get around the urban community's hesitancy? Well, at first, they used well-known celebrities to endorse the vaccine. Of course, there's no way of knowing if these were paid endorsements or if the celebrities were even vaccinated. But still, it seemed to work on most Americans. However, when the integrity of these endorsements were questioned by the public, many saw these celebrities as sellouts. So now what are the powers that be going to do? Easy. Find a noted celebrity with a long established career who has enough followers, street cred, and let's be honest, beauty, to pose as an opposing force. This celebrity will be vocal in their opposition and may even suffer economic consequences for their willingness to stand up against tyranny. At least that's how it should look. Enter Nicki Minaj. She's the perfect candidate. She even canceled her performance for MTV's VMA Awards. Was this part of the optics? We don't know. Did she get paid to cancel? We don't know. But she did get an invitation to call the White House and have her questions about the vaccine answered. Hmm. My prediction is that she'll get an invite to the White House and have her questions answered by Lord Fauci himself. Then she'll emerge as a true believer that the vaccines are safe and effective, followed up by a photo op of her getting the vaccine or some type of shot that will be told is the vaccine. And millions of Americans who were once hesitant will jump on board and profits will be made and peace will return to the land. But I could be wrong. And maybe Nicki Minaj will be the hero that we need to break the system. 
Time will tell. I won't be holding my breath for that. However, Nadia's predictions seem to be coming true. And you know what the request was? We'd like to offer Nikki an invitation to come to the White House to speak with two people, the two names, um, what is that man's name, Dr. Fauci, and with the Surgeon General. And, and do you know what I said? I said, well, um, I would rather not have to travel. Can we do some, something like a, um, a live? And they said that they're open to me choosing a platform to do a live. It's almost as if they were trying to use her as a plantation manager and when she had questions, well, you've been here the whole time. So yeah, it's all in the way that they make you look at things that will eventually get you to follow the science. The good news is that there are many folks that are openly standing behind Nikki's right to do whatever the hell she wants to do like Tucker Carlson and Candace Owens, but the propagandists have already said that they've debunked anything that they could ever have come up with, even before Tucker and Candace knew anything about this situation. And yet again, just like clockwork, or should I say prop work, dismissed Tucker and Candace and any person defending Nikki to be ists, if you will, even though everyone just kind of goes like this when hearing that old line again, because like, isn't Nikki black? I deduct from this tweet that she kind of agrees with me again, but again, don't forget, even for folks on the side that I agree with most of the time, I will apply the same rules when the publicity rules are used in the same way. You will hear me call anyone out that I feel is merely using that rule, especially to manipulate folks into doing whatever their establishment demands. Case in point, I've all but given up on Ben Shapiro since he became a regular contributor on Fox News. I listen to his co-hosts mostly. Ben has actually become quite sanctimonious for my taste. So yeah, publicity stunts like this right here just possibly might be the reason why Holly Weird and the elites are just not winning anymore. I mean, I already had a reason to take celebrity and publicity with a grain of salt, but now with Nadia's explanation, I have even less trust in those that profess to know what is good for everyone else, just because a lot of people watch their shows, movies, and other forms of entertainment. And don't forget, there will always be more of us famous nobodies than there will ever be of those famous nobodies. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. Don't forget, I'm working on going live to do my live feed call and talk show in the next two months. I have some of my clips and things done, but I'm still got a long way to go. I still have to design my live feed scenes on OBS and I've been working on a better logo and lots of ways to call in, I hope. <laughs> Don't forget, I'm still working on a shoestring budget with primitive tools, so any help would be appreciated in that aspect. So please help me grow so I can share your voice too. Right now, no matter who you are, what you're affiliated with, the freedom of everyone's speech is very important, and I want to do my part in making everyone's voice heard. I hope you do too. I just know that you all have something to say, just like I do which is why I started this channel and I'm going to try to do this talk show. I believe I'm going to call it, here's what I heard, Talk To Me America series. Let me know what you think about that. This and all my videos are brought to you by you and folks like you. If you'd like to see me continue my work, please click on the thumbs up button down below. Then click on the red subscribe button also down below. Next to that, please click on the notification bell under all so you don't miss any of my stuff. 
Join the conversation by giving me a comment down below and letting me know what you think of this video or any of my videos. And a donation would be the ultimate. It will also bring me one step closer to including you in the conversation. You can also catch me and my work on other platforms, just in case I disappear from here. All my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time.